Hi and welcome back to the channel. And for everyone who's enjoying the WebRTC tutorials, this time we're going to talk about WebRTC and 3JS. And as you already see here in the demo, we see a short sample where the left side is our WebRTC sender and the right side is our WebRTC receiver. And on the center side, we can either click on the left side, the cube turns red, in the center, cube turns green, and on the right side, cube turns blue. Or we can just move around using the 3JS orbit controls. And we see that the camera image is transmitted over the web via the Google Stand server to a client, which receives this video and shows it on the web page. I'll just walk you through the implementation part, show you the demo and what's needed. And for everyone who is interested in the source code, as always, the tier three members of the channel members are eligible to the source code access and they will get access to the GitHub repository after they joined. And for everyone else, I'll try to keep the video so that you can pause anytime and type the source code and copy the implementation on your side too. And talking about channel members, you see all the current channel members. Thanks so much for being a channel member supporting this channel. And if you're not already a member, make sure to join. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please like, subscribe, comment the video and help the channel grow. And enough of that now and let's dive into the implementation. So first of all, let's check what we're going to use for this project. We're going to use Vite as our development server and we're using 3.js for the 3D web rendering. You can also use Babylon.js here and we're using the WebSocket library which is widely available. Make sure to install these packages via node package manager, npm install 3, npm install ws and vit for the dev dependencies. After you've done these steps you can use npm create vit in the terminal, just open a new terminal, show you the steps, npm create vit and it will ask for a project name, I'll just add name it webrtc 3 js vit, let's go with some kind of default name, select vanilla js and select javascript. Then get into that directory, call npm install, wait for it to finish and then npm run dev to spin the site up. Just cancel, control Z, yes, I'll close my terminals here. And that's the basic setup you need. And after having set everything up, I'll just deleted everything that I didn't need, like the counter JS. And I replaced the code with my default stuff. And just closing the package to JSON, we're going to start with the server. So first of all, we will have to set up a WebSocket server, which will act as a signaling server. If you don't know what this means, the WebRTC documentation is pretty good. Just showing you the sites here, webrtc.org for everything related to WebRTC. And you can always get on the Get Started page, which will guide you through everything that you need to know when working with WebRTC. And even for instance, with data channels, it will give you a good overview how to use that, how to use the events, what does what, how can you, for instance, utilize the data channel with your web page. But there's also a very good tutorial, which is on the web.dev site, WebRTC basics, and there is the signaling information, which describes how the signaling is done. And I already covered this in another video here, but we'll just go over it very quick. So first we want to exchange information. In our case, we are going to exchange the video stream here. 
So we will need to create our TCP connection objects, exchange IC candidate data, add the candidate data on the other side on the other side, and every peer will have to exchange offers and answers for the RTC session description. So I'm as a sender want to create an offer, setting the right description for my RTC peer connection, the local description. And the remote description will be set for another peer, which will create the answer after he got the remote description and set it on his side. And then the answer is sent, in this case, to Alice, sent back to Alice. So Alice can set her remote description herself. Ping. And the connection is established. We'll see that in, a, in the code in a few seconds. But before we're going to do that, we'll need to have some kind of signaling. So our clients need to know each other. This is done via signaling server. In this case, it's a WebSocket server which runs on my local machine. And after everything is exchanged, the information will be sent over the stun servers. In this case, I'm using the Google stun servers. You can also look that up. Where do we see it? For instance, here where the data is exchanged. Back in the code, let's have a look at the WebSocket server here. It's a simple WebSocket server from the WebSocket library. Just setting it up here. And on the WebSocket connection, we just console log new client connect. And every time a message comes in, we're just forwarding it to everyone except the client who sent this message. And on close, we disconnect the client and we'll just log when the socket server is running. So this is the minimum configuration. This will just be a node server running on our local machine. It will be run on localhost 8080. And we'll do the communication between our sender and our receiver. I overwrote the style CSS so that the video um, either on the receiving side or on the sender side will just take up the whole screen and will resize accordingly. Just close that. And the index HTML is basically everything here. We're just having our script for the sender here, sender.js. There is where the magic happens. And the same goes for the receiver, except for the CSS. I'll just put it in here to have the same style here for the video. And we, of course, need a video element here to display the transferred video, which I use the ID remote video and our JavaScript file for receiving the WebRTC connection. Simple as that. And now it's going to get a little bit more complicated. So make sure to watch closely. So first of all, we're going to import three and the orbit controls as we want to display 3D, in this case a cube. And we're starting the WebSocket connection here, adding a peer connection, adding the Google Stun server here, which is widely available, and setting up the events for, in this case, exchanging candidate data and sending the messages over the WebSocket. This is all the signaling that will appear. So if a message comes, we'll just get the text as the message data package will always be a blob. We'll have to convert it to text, then convert it to JSON. And we'll just check, is this the answer that we're getting from our offer? Then set the remote description here. Or if this is candidate data, we're just adding the candidate data for the peer connection. So that's all the WebRTC magic. And after that is executed, we'll just creating the 3GS scene, a new scene, a new camera, just scrolling over here. A new WebGL renderer, setting the size for the window, append the child to display our 3GS scene, adding the orbit controls here, adding a cube with New box geometry, mesh standard material, in this case it's green. Adding a new cube, add it to the scene and position the camera a little bit away from the cube. 
adding simple lighting here and I'll call it animation, but it's actually the update loop here. So requesting the animation frame from the animate method here, setting a automatic cube rotation. Also very simple here, update the camera controls if we want to orbit around a cube and render the scene. As a little bonus, I just added a click event. So whenever I click on an area in our VGS scene, the cube will either turn red, green, or blue. And we want to capture the stream here from our DOM element from the renderer with 30 frames and add this track to our peer connection. So for each track we're getting here, this is of course only one track, we're going to add this to the peer connection and the peer connection does now know that there is a video track that we add, added and after everything is done and to keep it very very simple we just want to create the offer and send, set the local description of our peer connection to this offer and then send it to the other clients that are connecting And when the other client will get our offer, you will send back an answer, which will be captured here in the on message. And if the answer is here, we'll set the remote description and the connection will be established. So a little extra, I'll just add the resize event here in, in case you want to open your developer console and log something if something goes wrong and um, we can always add log messages here and view them in the browser and the same goes here for the receiver side it's basically it's a very similar implementation so we're creating a new web socket we're creating the peer connection with the same stun server from google we're exchanging ice candidates here and on the client side we'll have to check if our remote stream has an on-track event. So a track was added to the connection and we'll have to get that track and display it on the remote video. So the track will be the source object here. If the remote video source object is not the stream that we're getting here from the event, we'll just say, okay, please display our video here. And on the client side, we also have to handle our messages that we'll get for our WebSocket from our signaling server. So we're trying to decode the message here and check if it's an offer. If yes, we're setting the remote description because, well, we got an offer. We have to create the answer and then set our local description and send it right back to the sender. And on the other hand, if we get candidate data, we'll just add this to our candidate data here. A little bit of error handling here and that's basically it. That's everything you need to set up your WebRTC video transmission with a 3GS scene. And in case you're wondering how to start all this, so the WebSocket server will be a node server running and we're using the Vite debug server for our sender and receiver side. So I'm opening a terminal here. And I'll just tell it node server.ps and our WebSocket server is now running with a WebSocket server on localhost 8080. And we're just adding a new PowerShell terminal and let's and can run dev for having our beat server running here. And one thing you will have to remember here is that you will have to start the receiver side first. So the receiver will be started here. And then the sender, in our case, the index will be started and the index will be now sending our video data to the receiver. And color changing works, the orbiting works. Let's call the green cube here. And that's basically how you establish a video connection over WebRTC with 3JS.
So I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it informative. And if you're interested in the source code, feel free to become a channel member on tier 3. Please like and subscribe. Give me more suggestions what you want to see next. I know this is a very simple sample and that there are way more ways to use WebRTC here. And let's see, maybe I'll do an XR implementation too. And subscribe to the channel to not miss any new videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.